Welcome to the first demo in our static website hosting section. Now, what we're gonna do in this demo is go ahead and set up our bucket. We're gonna move all of our website assets into this bucket. We're just gonna do it manually. It's just kind of showcase how we can do that using the AWS Management Console. And then we're gonna go ahead and configure our bucket to ensure that everything is public. And we, of course, are going to test it. On the screen here, I'm in the Amazon S3 console. And the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and create a bucket. So I'm gonna click Create Bucket. I'm gonna call this s3.crowsen.io. That's gonna be our bucket name. Now, I don't really care what region I'm in. I'm just gonna leave it as the default of Ohio. I'm gonna go down. We're gonna leave ACLs disabled with bucket ownership enforced. Right now, I'm gonna leave this enabled, so block all public access, and you already know by this time that we're going to go ahead and have to take that off. We're just gonna leave all the defaults since this is just a demo. So I'm gonna click Create Bucket, and now we have our new bucket right here, s3.crowson.io. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and open up this bucket, and the first thing we need to do is we need to upload all of our website assets. Now, if I go over here, you can see in VS Code, I've got a bunch of different files in here that make up a website that we're gonna use. So I've got CSS, fonts, images, uploads, and I've got a bunch of HTML files in here. We're gonna use these as our website. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna minimize this. We're gonna copy all those files into our bucket. So I'm just gonna click on Upload. And on my other screen, I'm going to browse to that directory and I'm just gonna highlight everything. We're just gonna drag them all over here and drop them here. So there are quite a bit of files. There's 708 total, it's 15 megs, so it's not too bad. And I'm just gonna go ahead and leave all the defaults and click on upload. Now in the past I've done this, it takes about six minutes. And so what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and cut out the video just so you don't have to sit there six minutes and watch all these files upload. So we'll kick back off as soon as these files get uploaded and we will continue configuring our bucket. All right, looks like that just wrapped up. It went a little bit slower than I expected. It's actually storming here as I'm recording this. So I don't know if that's impacting my internet, but you can see that we have uploaded all the files. So I'm gonna hit close here and you can see in our bucket, we've got all of those files. So click on type here. You can see we've got a couple folders in here and we've got all of those files. So we've got all our files in our S3 bucket. Now the first thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and disable S3 block public access. So we go over to our properties and scroll down. We've got our static website hosting configuration right here. But if we go over to permissions, you can see we've got block all public access on. So I'm gonna click on edit and I'm gonna go ahead and just uncheck this box and say save. It doesn't make our bucket public, but it's going to allow us to do that. We'll go ahead and confirm that. Now underneath the permissions, we need to modify our bucket policy. So if we go to properties right now, we don't have any URL to use for static website hosting. And actually if we were to go into our objects and I'll find index.html and click on that, you can see that we get access denied so it is not yet public. So I'll go back here, go to our buckets, go into our bucket here, go into permissions, and we're gonna modify our bucket policy. So I'm gonna click edit here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the bucket policy public access and go ahead and put that in here. And this is the one that I showcase on my GitHub. And so what we're gonna do is go ahead and just ensure that all of our objects inside our bucket are public. So I'm gonna go here in this bucket ARN right here and click on copy. I'm gonna highlight this right here and paste it in. And you can see that we have resources are in AWS S3, s3.crowson.io. I'm gonna click on here and do forward slash star because we want to access all of our objects inside of our bucket. And of course we have principal star here, which means anybody. So if I were to apply this before I remove the block public access, I would actually get an access denied because it would prevent me from editing this bucket policy and adding a policy that has a principle of star. So we've got our bucket policy here. We're allowed public read. S3 get object is the only action we're permitting and we're permitting that on anything inside of our bucket. So I'm gonna scroll down here, click on save changes, and there we go. Objects can be public. 
Now what we need to do is enable this bucket for static website hosting. So I'm gonna click on properties here, scroll all the way down to the bottom. We have static website hosting down here at the bottom. I'm gonna click on edit and we get static website hosting configuration. I'm gonna click on enable and we get hosting type. We have host a static website or redirect request for an object. We want host a static website. Down here at index document, I'm just going to leave the default as index.html because I do have an index.html. I don't have an error document right now or any redirection rules. So I'm just gonna leave the defaults and I'm gonna click on save changes. So that has enabled our bucket for static website hosting. We've enabled public access and we've uploaded all of our content. So now if I scroll back down here, you can see now we have a bucket website endpoint. I have HTTP, s3.crowson.io, s3 website, US East 2, because we're in Ohio, .amazon, AWS .com. So if I click on that, we should get access to our website that's hosted in our bucket. So there we go. Welcome to the Amazon S3 restaurant, serving the delicious cloud since 1990. There is our static website that is hosted in S3, and you can see that our URL is pointing directly to our bucket. That's how we create a bucket, enable all the permissions and settings for static website hosting, and then of course we can test it by hitting the URL that's provided in our bucket. Now that we have our website up and running, what we wanna do is tie this to a more friendly name. We don't want users going to s3.crowson.io.s3 website, blah, blah, blah. We wanna give them a simple DNS name. So let's go back to AWS. And what we're going to do is we're gonna work with a domain that I already own, which is just krausen.io. So under services, I'm gonna go into route 53. And I've got a, quite a few domains in here already, I actually cleaned them out. So I only have four now. If I go into route 53, you can see I have krausen.io. So we're gonna modify this domain name. So we're gonna go back into S3. I'm gonna right click this and do open a new tab so we can work on both of them at the same time. We're gonna go into our bucket and then we're gonna scroll down, go to properties and scroll down. And I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna copy this link or you just click the little button right next to it. Now what we need to do is go back into Route 53. We're gonna go into our hosted zone that's already been created for my domain. And then I'm gonna create a C name. So I'm gonna create a record and I'm gonna drop this down. I'm gonna say C name. That's gonna redirect one domain name to another URL. And the subdomain we want is just S3. That creates s3.krausen.io. And under the value, I'm gonna paste the URL that I want for our domain and get rid of HTTP. And here is the value we want to redirect people to. I'm gonna leave the TTL as the default and I'm gonna go ahead and create our record. So we've got a new record in here, down here, s3.krausen.io. It's a C name and it points to our bucket. So if I were to open up a new incognito window here and then type in our s3 dots, krausen.io and hit enter. Let's see how fast DNS propagates. Sometimes it may propagate a little bit slow. And there we go. There's our website by using our friendly name of s3.krausen.io. We get access to our same static website that's hosted on S3. Now notice up here it says not secure. We do not currently have a TLS certificate to secure our domain. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and add CloudFront to the mix. We'll add a TLS cert and then we'll secure our website that way. But hopefully that was useful for you. Again, I'm gonna close that out. Again, all we did in Route 53, we went into our domain, we created a new C name record and we pointed to the URL that's provided to us by the static website hosting feature and then that allows us to do the redirection. Now, of course, if you're not using Route 53, you can do this in any DNS provider that you're using. So if you're using some other service, maybe provided by your domain registrar or something like that, you simply go in there and modify your DNS and add the domain, add the C name record, and you're good to go. It may not propagate as fast as if you're using all AWS services, but that's the way you would do it, even if you're using an external service. Hopefully that was helpful for you. In the next section, we're going to go ahead and add our CloudFront distribution. Now that we have our website up and running using our custom domain, let's go ahead and add CloudFront to the mix so we can secure our website using TLS. 
So back in AWS, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and go into CloudFront. So I'm gonna click on search and type in CloudFront at the top here. We're gonna click on that. Now I'm gonna create a new distribution here and under the origin domain, I'm gonna click on my bucket here. But since we're using static website hosting, I'm just gonna click this use website endpoint so it uses our endpoint instead. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna scroll on down towards the bottom here. What I want to do under default cache behavior under viewer, I wanna redirect HTTP to HTTPS. So if somebody actually tries to hit our website using HTTP, well it's gonna to redirect to HTTPS automatically. And then of course use the certificate that we're going to create. So we're gonna continue leaving some of the defaults down here. We're gonna go all the way down towards the bottom under settings. Now what we wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just use North America and Europe only just so it's faster. Under alternative domain name right here, I'm gonna add the name of our website. So s3.krausen.io. Now this is going to be important because when it creates our custom SSL certificate, it's going to add this as an alternative name, otherwise known as a SAN, sometimes on a certificate. It'll be valid for both the CloudFront distribution URL and the URL of s3.krausen.io. So we're gonna go ahead and add that. Now down here for custom SSL certificate, well, I don't have one yet. So I'm gonna click on request certificate. It's gonna bring us straight into certificate manager. Let me close out all these notifications and I'm going to request a public certificate. So I'm gonna click on next. What is the fully qualified domain name? Well, we want s3.krausen.io. Now down here, we can do DNS validation because I am using Route 53 on here, we can do that. I'm gonna leave everything else as the default. So I'm gonna click on requests down here. It's gonna give me some information when I go in here. So I'm gonna click on refresh. So it should say pending validation right here. If I open up that request, what I can do is you can see under here the pending validation. And it wants me to create a CNAME record inside of my DNS. Now, since I am already using Route 53, I can go ahead and click this button right here, create records in Route 53. If you're using an external DNS solution, you would have to mainly go add these. So I'm gonna click on create records in Route 53. It already recognizes that I have a domain here, create records. So it's gonna create it directly inside of the Route 53 zone. So now that that's done, if you actually wanna go see that, go over to Route 53, you'll open that into a new tab, go back into our hosted zones, go into krausen.io, and here is that C name right here that it created for us, right? It uses that for validation. Back in Certificate Manager, we are still in a validating state. Now, if I go out and click on refresh and we'll see how fast, sometimes it takes a little bit. So we have to wait for Amazon to go validate that DNS record. So if we go in here, we can scroll down. Okay, it's actually done now, it's successful. That has been validated. So if we go back here, certificates, you can see it's been issued. Awesome. We have our new certificate. Cool, so we can go back to our distribution. And what we need to do is click on refresh here right next to the certificate. And if we click the drop down, we can actually see our new certificate here, s3.krausen.io. So we go ahead and click that. We're gonna leave all the other defaults in here and we're gonna go ahead and click create distribution after we click on this, sorry. <laughs> go down here create distribution, and it's gonna go ahead and create our distribution. Now, CloudFront can take 20 or more minutes to create our distribution for it to fully be deployed. So what I'll do is I'll keep an eye on it. I'll keep refreshing, so I'm gonna go back to distributions. I'm gonna click on refresh. You can see over on the right, we have deploying. And so what I'll do is I'll pause the video again, wait for that to complete, and then we will go ahead and test it. Now notice that already we have our domain name for our CloudFront. So I guess while we're waiting, we can go ahead and modify our DNS. So we're gonna right click and copy our domain name for our CloudFront. We're gonna go back to our Route 53. And remember that CNAME that we created for s3.krausen.io? Well, we wanna modify that now. So I'm gonna click on that, I'm gonna click Edit Record. And instead of pointing to S3, we wanna point that to CloudFront instead. So I'm gonna click on save right there. Now that may take a little bit to propagate, but that's okay because we're still waiting for our distribution to be created. So go back to CloudFront, click on refresh, still deploying. 
So I'll pause the video and wait for that to finish deploying, and then we should be able to test it and make sure it works and it's secured with TLS. All right, so it looks like that one wrapped up. That only took about five minutes or so to deploy that. So you can see that we have our CloudFront distribution here for s3.crowdzen.io. We have our origin that points back to our bucket, and you can see that it is enabled. So now we should be able to go over here. And remember we had s3.crowdzen.io before. We already updated our DNS record. So we should do HTTPS colon slash slash and hit enter. And let's see if it worked. Awesome, we get our website. And up here you can see the lock. You can see that the connection is secure by our certificate. And for the fun of it, what we can do is let's just type in HTTP. Remember we had that redirect on there, so we get rid of the S and hit enter here. You can see it does automatically redirect us to HTTPS because we set up our CloudFront distribution to redirect HTTP to HTTPS for us. So that wraps up this demo. Hopefully that was beneficial for you. You're able to see all the way from creating the bucket to uploading the content and modifying our bucket permissions and S3 block public access settings, all the way to creating a CNAME record to provide a friendly URL for our website. And then finally, adding a CloudFront distribution on the front end of it to use TLS to secure our website. So that's it with this one. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.